right, and welcome to another AIC Productions video. I'm doing another video update on my HP 14. Um, the, the HP doesn't really give this laptop a name, so I can't really get, tell you what its name is because it doesn't really have one, but it's the uh, NR. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description if you're interested in purchasing it. Um, but it definitely is uh, probably one of the best value for um, its price laptops that you can currently buy. Um, if you see my other videos, this will be a little bit of a rehash, but for $200 you get a laptop with 4 gigs of memory, a um, AMD E2 processor, um, which is very compatible, and I'll show you that um, w with some other laptops I have. It's very comparable, I should say, with other laptops um, in this price range. Um, you get 32 gigs of onboard storage, um, but most importantly, you get a 14-inch 1080 screen, which is by far one of the best screens I've seen, even on computers costing two to three times as much money. Um, I've seen seven and eight hundred dollar laptops that have way worse screens than this two hundred dollar laptop has. And some of the things I've done to this laptop, um, it's no longer stock. Um, I've made some changes to it simply because it's such an amazing screen. I kind of wanted to boost some of the performance of the machine to go along with what the screen can do. Um, so what I've done is so far I have thrown in an um, SSD hard drive. And I've thrown, I shouldn't say SSD hard drive, I've thrown in an SSD, SSD drive um, versus the onboard 32 gig um, storage. I'll show you what uh, I did that here in a moment. I also thrown in 16 gigs of memory. Now, the 16 gigs is a bit overkill, but I just wanted to throw everything I had at it. First of all, to show that it could hold 16 gigs of memory, um, that you can do that, and then just to see what kind of performance um, I'd get out of it. Now, one thing I did notice with the memory, I have a CPU-Z up, is um, even with two DIMMs in there, it does not run in dual channel mode. It is still just single channel. So if you want to upgrade this and you just have um, you know, a stick of 8 gigs or something, I'd throw that in. Um, I wouldn't necessarily specifically go for two DIMMs because I don't think you get uh, much, if any, performance um, improvement from having the two DIMMs since it doesn't run in dual channel mode. Now, I have here two screenshots of Crystal Mark uh, or Crystal Disk Mark. Um, the one on the right is the original disk, the 32 gig storage. The one on the left is the SSD I bought. Now, the SSD, I did not go super expensive. I bought this Air i drive is a 240 gig why this one because it was the cheapest 240 gig i could buy and it came with free one day shipping or same day shipping i should say from amazon prime so that's the reason why i bought it um, it's nothing spectacular other than being just an ssd and having fairly decent performance now some people said that buying an ssd might not be worth it because you're going through the um, CD-ROM, what would be a CD-ROM port on here, but I'll show you my other laptops. It doesn't seem to make that big a difference. Um, it's a little bit slower, but I think that has more to do with the fact that I bought a really cheap SSD than the port it's plugged into, because the performance um, numbers are close, just a little bit off. Uh, but as you can see on the right, um, the numbers are, especially this is sequential, they're like three times, almost three times faster um, with the SSD there on the left than they are with the standard drive on the right. That's one thing with these, with all of these systems that come with that 30, just the 32 or maybe 64 gigs of storage is man, they use really slow storage. Um, in fact, I don't know if it outperforms a normal spinning hard drive. I'd have to do a test. I don't, I don't have a laptop currently with a spinning drive in it um, to do that test. But I, I have a feeling that you're not going to get very good performance um, numbers out of that spinning drive. Uh, but you're not getting very good performance out of the 32 gig storage either. So the SSD is 100% a worthwhile update. In fact, what I've done is I've actually made the SSD my boot drive. Um, I've cloned the 32 gigs to the SSD 
and then use the um, rest of the I, and, and I expanded it so that drive actually has um, about 60 or excuse me 45 gigs available to it and then use the rest as my quote unquote D drive for additional storage. I'll go ahead and clear the 32 gigs for maybe I'll throw music or something on there that's not very fast. And then I wanted to go um, in my last video you saw I did some uh, performance testing on it. I'll scroll over to these numbers here. And I just want to compare my previous results to the results with um, the SSD and the memory. So if you look at this first number, and let me bump these up in size a little bit. Doing things on the fly because I'm that professional. Let's bump these up, make them bold. A little easier to see. Okay. So you can see um, before, I know I had an 18th percent, uh, percentile um, with an 870. Now I'm up at 998. This is an overall performance um, in the 21st percentile. CPU, I'm actually surprised, did go up slightly um, with performance. Not quite sure what the storage or the memory had to do with that, but that's a 300 point, uh, all, nearly 300 point increase. Um, the 2D went up by one uh, the 3d mark actually is funny that went down which surprised me uh, I didn't expect these numbers to change much if at all simply because um, I wasn't making any changes to the CPU or the 3d graphics uh, so having it go down or up at all kind of surprised me and then we get to the memory mark again didn't change much because you're not changing from single channel to dual channel and so we went up by just one um, one mark now if you look down here at the bottom disk mark is where the huge change came to uh, before it was only at 690 we're at uh, basically 2900 so we went from I believe it was like the 10th percentile or something up to the 76th percentile. So we made a huge jump in performance of the disc, which is pretty obvious uh, with the crystal disc. So if you buy this laptop for about, it was the um, SSD was about 68 bucks. The adapter was another $8 and then a couple of Velcro dots, which you could do with just about anything else um, to secure it into place. You're out the door for less than $70, so $270, and you have an amazing laptop. Um, upgrading the memory, I'm probably going to downgrade it back down to about 8 gigs, which is more than enough for this machine, in my personal opinion. Now, I'm just going to compare this against a few other systems here. For the price, um, I have a number of computers that I've spent about the same amount of money on. Um, about that $200. Let me get a little bit more light in here. There we go. So this is my Asus. It is an uh, X205T, I believe. Let me see here. Yeah, X205T. It's kind of hard to see because I have a case on here. Um, which I hope they make a case for this because I really like these cases. They really do a good job of protecting the system. Alright, so on this system, again, this is an Intel Atom processor, and so its performance is pretty um, poor compared to the other system. It's, it's obviously a lower, um, a lower processor, a slower processor, and so let's first start off with the storage. If you look at these numbers, they're very similar to the previous numbers. Again, this goes along with that... Uh, 32 gig storage. The storage that they use for that just isn't very fast. And that's reflected here again. We have a score. 632. It's 650 on the, on the other laptop. Which I think has more to do with the memory probably. Uh, memory mark. Uh, 383 uh, 3D mark. So this has much slower memory and also has a lot less memory. So when it uses any um, resources this only has two gigs and so if you use anything um, even just booting up the computer consumes nearly a gig so it really doesn't give you much to do anything you load up a couple web pages and you start to consume that memory pretty quick 
the 3D and 2D marks, 130, 627. This is in the first percentile. This is the lowest score you probably could get um, and have it even register. CPU, um, 661. So not great, but again, this this is a laptop that you know you're going to use to browse a website here or there. You know you expect many hours, uh, eight nine hours of battery life on this system. Uh, so you're not expecting it to be uh, a powerhouse. You're expecting it for extreme portability, extreme lightness, and extreme battery life. So we'll go to the next step up. So this is my Dell Inspiron uh, 3000, 11 inch. See if you can see it through the case there. Again, I have one of these uh, cases on here. These are really nice cases. So on here, we're at the 12th percentile. So a little bit better. Um, close out of that. So the CPU, this is at a 993. And this is at a get this back up here. This is at a two excuse me, twenty four eighty one. So the CPU difference, this is two and a what, two and a quarter times faster than this other laptop is. It's a big difference. So this processor is significantly faster than the Celeron processor that's in my Dell. Uh, but Graphics pretty similar um, with uh, the 2D running at uh, 198, uh, the 3D at 280. The memory is at uh, 589, again, very similar. And the storage, expand this down here, 844. So, storage on this one is actually not bad compared to the other ones. Um, but again, this has that 32 gig storage. You can't upgrade it, you can't change it. It's all soldered to the system board, which is one way they make these so cheap. I think I paid like $160, $170 for this. I haven't been as cheap as $150, but I think it was about $160, $170 with tax and everything out the door. So, very similar performance. So, now you're saying to yourself, you know, what, what else could I get for my same $200? Well, one thing you could look at is used computers. And this is my Lenovo uh, T420. And again, now this one I have upgraded um, the SSD on. It's a little bit better. It's a transcend SSD on this one. So it gets a little bit better numbers than the um, AirEye that I put into the HP. So, a little bit better numbers there for the, uh, um, strictly the disc. I'll go ahead and bring up, uh, the benchmarks here. Now, this laptop, uh, it, uh, it gets a much better, um, performance, partially because even though this is an old laptop, this laptop came out five, six years ago now. Um, it has a Core i5. It has a second gen Core i5 processor. Um, I bought it used. I bought it quote unquote refurbished. And I paid about $200 for it. In fact, I paid exactly $209 for it shipped to my house. Which is exactly what I paid for the HP shipped to my house. About $209. So it's in the 46th percentile versus the 21st percentile, according to Passmark. Um, some of the reasons: CPU. It's a much faster CPU. Um, it's a lot more has a lot more grunt to it. It doesn't run um, as many of the technologies that the newer processors have. It doesn't have as many cores. I believe it only has two cores versus four cores. Uh, but it just has. A lot more grunt and so a laptop like this um, lasts longer performance wise because um, it just is a much higher performing system uh, same goes for the graphics the 2d mark and the 3d mark a little bit better just because it has more power behind that 
CPU, but it consumes more power. It's a lot heavier. It gets hotter, requires a lot more cooling. Now we come down to memory, and on the memory, this one's a lot, lot better. Even though it only has 8 gigs, um, it has two chips, um, and they're running in dual, um, in dual instead of single. And so they're a lot, it's a lot faster for that and it really bumps up the performance of the system and it's noticeable especially when you're browsing the web and things like that this is a faster machine um, however it weighs nearly twice as much its battery life um, is similar with a nine cell battery versus a three cell battery um, and so this is really a workstation if so if you're doing a lot more you know, video encoding or things like that and you only have two hundred dollars to spend buy one of these um, Plus, this can this is already set up for if you know a standard hard drive, and so you can throw in an SSD a lot easier. In fact, you can throw in two SSDs into this laptop. You can get that same uh, caddy that I bought and stole the um, adapter out of for this. You can buy that and just slide that that right into this laptop, as if you had a CD-ROM the whole time, and or had that instead of a CD-ROM the whole time. And you have two drives on it, and you can have two SSDs. You can run them in RAID. This can support RAID uh, between those two drives. If you buy two of the same, get much better performance out of them. And so that's something, if you're doing very high technical things on an extreme budget, look at something like this, a workstation computer that's used slash refurbished. You're going to get a lot for your money. Now, just for kicks and giggles, I grabbed my other workstation laptop that I've had for a few years now, or almost going on three years now here, which is my HP ZBook 14. This has a um, fourth gen core i7 dual core processor, it has a dedicated video card, and it also has a 14 inch. Um, 10, uh, 1080 screen. Now, one thing I will say that the uh, Lenovo only has a 1366 by 786 or 768 screen, so it's you know a much lower resolution than the two HPs that I have, and that's one reason why you would spend the money on the HP versus the Lenovo is for again the screen. The screen is almost everything on that laptop. So just real quick on this, um, it's in the 67th percentile. Obviously, it's significantly faster with the CPU, significantly faster with the uh, graphics because, again, it has a dedicated video card in it. Not surprising at all. Uh, memory, it's got 16 gigs running in dual channel. Um, and it has a much better SSD. It has a Samsung... Um, Evo 840, one terabyte in it. I think the drive cost me almost a thousand dollars when it was new, eight eight hundred bucks when it was new, something like that. So that one, just the SSD, could have bought all the other computers I have uh, combined easily, and the upgrades I've I've done to them, um, and still not have paid for the one SSD. So that's something to consider. You know, if you, the reason why this computer is so powerful is because at the time I was using it for work and since then it's become kind of my personal uh, media machine uh, so I don't really do it the justice that it deserves but at the time it made sense I ran multiple VMs at one time uh, for testing purposes and I needed the horsepower and I needed the memory and I needed a very fast drive to support multiple machines running on the same computer so that's just to kind of compare obviously uh, Crystal, Mark, significantly higher numbers, ridiculously higher numbers um, in some of the areas than on the other SSDs. So I'll go ahead and put that to the side. So this video has gone a little bit longer than I expected to. This is just a performance update on this HP. I wanted to compare it to some other machines um, just to give, you know, a baseline I guess because numbers don't mean a whole lot if you're talking about one specific computer um, they mean more when you're talking about a comparison of machines so now what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and end this video just because it's gone on for quite a while probably sick of me hearing me talk I'm going to go ahead and um, 
start a new one. I'm going to play some of the same games I played previously. I'm going to play again with the SSD and the more memory installed just to see what difference that makes, if any. Um, I know some games like the uh, uh, Minecraft, that, that those are pretty big system hogs. And so by being able to give them a little bit more memory, hopefully we can get some better performance out of them. Anyways, thank you for watching this uh, piece. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'll put a link to the memory I threw in this, the um, SSD I threw in this, the adapter I needed um, to get the hard SSD in there, and a link to the machine itself. Um, for $200, if you're buying a two, brand new $200 laptop, this by far is the best $200 laptop I think you can buy right now. Um, I've, I look at $200, $200 laptops regularly. I kind of feel like that's where, um, at least for my videos, where it's kind of at. For some reason, I love them. I love these $200 laptops. I think there's just something about them for most users, and so that's why I go to. Anyways, thank you again for watching, and I hope you have a great day.